because mm. it's your mindset that will yeah. trip you up more than the money. Mm. You get so insecure or you get so locked into how you see the world that like it said, hey man, give me the weekend. Let me go back and look over everything and then come up with a number. Monday. Now Friday, we trying to we trying to work up the nerve to say ten thousand. Mm -hmm. Monday, he says this should be thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you for real? He's like, yeah. I like you feel good about it. He like, yeah. I say I'll pitch it, no problem. Walked in there, we pitched it. The CEO flash. I mean, we went and took pictures and everything. Mm -hmm. Look, look. Got to the money page. Investment, not cost, mm -hmm. not price. Mm -hmm. Investment. We broke it down, itemized. He said, yeah, this looks like about what I'm used to paying. Mm, what if that thing said 10? Ooh, did and you, then after that, you ain't the same person. You yeah. are not the same person yeah. after you charge what you are You're worth. You're not the same person. The other the right. The other right. He's the right. Welcome to another edition then, of the Social Proof Podcast. <laughs> yes! Goodness gracious. I love, I love <laughs> catching Donnie freestyle. She's actually pretty good. She has some bars a second ago. But we are live. Okay, we're here. Anything else you want to say, Donnie? <laughs> so that happened. <laughs> Okay. Now the cameras are on. Okay. All right. Cool, cool. So we're here um, at the Social Proof Podcast. We have an awesome guest that we're excited to hear about. Donnie, you want to you wanna ask Mighty about his week first? You know what? Let's just get this out the way. Introduce yourself because we're all friends and it might just get ratchet and weird <laughs> and real conversational. So let's just get that part out the way. Go okay. on and introduce yourself and then we'll... Just Start. like just my name and all that good hey, stuff. Yeah, what you do, what how you that do? works. Yeah. Just say hey. What's going on, y'all? My name is Madi Woodard. I do marketing and branding. And right now I focus on helping entrepreneurs get to the six figure level. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Now, how was your week? Uh my week has been pretty busy, actually. Mm. Um, same old same. I just made a post today that said Thanksgiving ain't nothing but a work day with better food. So uh Ooh. that's pretty much mm. been indicative of my week. Gotcha. Are you single? Yes. All the way. Single, like, I can put my number in the What caption. percentage, though? Like, uh, here's the thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, 100% single is like, yo, I ain't talking to nobody. Don't nobody oh, well, hit me up. I don't, I don't talk to no exes. When you're 90% single, mm -hmm. it's like, every now and again, you got, like, your little flirts on Instagram, right? You know she liking your joys. You're like, you're 90% single, okay? When you're 0% single, you're married. I don't agree with any of that except for the last part. But what you mean? Ahead. What percentage would you? I mean, when I am 100% single, that means that I can be texting with exes and flirting and doing whatever I want, and nobody has a right to get upset about it. Yeah. If no, I'm you're, 90 still, you're still percent. You're still mostly single. So for no, instance, I'm all the way single. So, so for <laughs> for instance, if you've been texting a guy for the last week, right? Mm-hmm. You're not 100%. Oh, I'm 1,000. No, that's like no, that's, that's that's like that's like that's like 80% single. That is absolutely. I'm not I'm not committed to anything in any in any increment of a percentage just because like I'm texting. This I'm is not. like married people stuff. I'm 100% single. 100 100%. Right? When you're single, you're single. You ain't flirted with nobody recently? Yeah, I flirt, but can you get me to stop whatever I'm doing mm -hmm. and summon me or ask me or get me to do whatever? That's when I would start taking away percentages. So can you get me to, like, do whatever you want me to do? Let me put it this way. All okay. Right. And I haven't formulated this thought in my head just yet. But we can just, tell. Just it's coming together. Walk with me. So you meet a young lady. Yeah. And um, you get her number that day. Okay. And y'all talking that day. Even if you're talking, if, if, if you're, like, dating 10 other women, you're not going to tell her that because you want to give her a sense that, you're not out here wilding, right? Which makes you like 90% single. You're 10% hers in her head. Well, I think anybody, like if you are adult age, you would assume that somebody is at least casually having conversation with somebody else. Exactly. So I will tell you if you care to know, I'm not just gonna say, hey, I'm texting three, four other people, but I right. will be clear that I'm dating multiple people. Right. I'm getting to know additional people. Mm. And that's kind of how it goes. Yeah, when you're 100% single, you're like, I'm not talking to nobody. It's just me. I'm a monk. I'm not that dating is. nobody. I'm not Jeez, on the ground. I don't think you even believe that. I think, <laughs> I think you're just trying to drive There's up percentages. No. I mean. So, look, me, uh, me as a Kira and Crystal Lee, we went through this all last year. And I was trying to explain my point of the percentage. Okay. How did they feel about the percentage? So, okay. You ever been in a situation? <laughs> it's not your girl. Okay. But you can't date nobody else. I've been in that before. 
I'm not in that now. Okay, so what percentage is that's not 100 percent single? That's scared to commit. It's a percentage. That's system. called oh. control. So for me, no, no it's more no, so. It's not. No, no, I it's look at mine is more so more level. so respect. So it depends. Or respect. Respect yeah. is also a good word. So yeah. you're not. But one, it, you're it, not. It's both. But you're I was on both. paper. You would write. You're not married. Yeah. You'd write single. Well, but on percentage paper, wise, that person is still a good. Forty so percent there yours. Are, there, are there are different. There are different. relationship loading is what that would yeah. be called, right? There's different. So, <laughs> and when I said controlling, like especially from men to women, a lot of times, and I see it sometimes with women to men, like guys who are like, you can't see anybody else, but I'm out here doing me. That's just control. And there are some women who would actually agree to that, right? Well, I know, but if I want to be seen as the wife, I'm just gonna do me and just be, you know to him even though we're not exclusive but I'm exclusive I don't I would I would never play that game you know what I'm gonna create a percentage system what let me figure I don't I don't have it all figured out but it makes sense up here okay so, so my D how about you want to get to a podcast so last little thing on that <laughs> the control piece I think that everybody is free to make their own decisions and you can deal with the consequences so yeah. if I say hey my preference is that you don't talk to anybody else but I'm gonna do my thing you would have to be crazy to agree with that. Absolutely. Like that, to me, I'm not controlling you. I'm saying this is what it is. If that don't work for you, please you don't like agree to don't. that. You Absolutely. know what I mean? You're um, out on a date with somebody. Is there anybody in the mm. world you'd feel some type of way or like, ah, uh, if they saw you? Uh, some things could be awkward. You're about 80%, <laughs> man. You're 80. But I would still say no, what's up. I wouldn't. you have interest and yeah. you're on the verge of trying to make something happen. You like this person more than, but for whatever reason, you hadn't committed yet. And so if I see you out on a date, I'm like, Ooh. but I think, so if I just went on a first date, single. no, if I just went on a first date, <laughs> if I'm on a first sense. date today, and let's just say I was on a first date last night, or if I'm on a date today, and I went on a first date with someone else last night, and they walked into this other date, I'm going to be like, Ooh, I'm out here. Which in the makes you 85% single. No, I think no, it's just it an awkward it's social awkward. thing that doesn't happen a lot. So you probably don't quite know how to respond. So now if I, this is why I say I'm 100%. If I see somebody that I'm texting with and they're out on a date, I'm not going to feel a type of way because I'm a little more chill about You'll my You'll make a joke about it later. <laughs> oh, I see you. I see you. <laughs> I'll, make a, I'll, make, I'll make a joke yeah, about it live. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm sending yeah. everybody uh, drinks. You know Which what I'm saying? Which means she's 90, 90% single. Because there's a, there, no. you know what? Let me, let me, let me write right. the rules on it. Okay. And let me make it make more sense than just freestyling on the top of my head. All right. But this because makes perfect sense. Because that makes no sense. There's okay. a percentage system. But let's get to a podcast, okay? So my idea is, um, I, for one, I just want to say that I'm super proud of your growth and not that you weren't always dope, but killing it in your career, quit. Then you're building a, um, a successful t-shirt brand with some partners and then something tragic happens. And then that kind of, you know, the, the energy is not the same. And then you go into contracting and net, like I've seen your journey of yeah. being in the industry, kill it, something happened. But now, now we finally get to see well, the world gets to see yeah. what we've been seeing about you when you had 4,000 followers. <laughs> My D exploded. Yeah. You exploded. Yeah. You, so I would say um, the biggest change was the blessing. Like, I'm, I'm very realistic about the tragedies and things that's happened this year. Mm -hmm. For me... Uh, Q1 of this year was my dopest quarter. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, bet I got the right clients. I got the right contracts in place. And then I was on quarterly contracts. January, February, March, early April is when the world stopped. So all these people that you had agreements with, they're like, mm -hmm. it's not personal, but I don't know what's about to happen with my business. Can we revisit this in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days? And it hit me. I'm not going to let other people determine the right. quality of life that I have, especially if I got the skills to come in and grow your business. Yeah. So for me, it was like, I'm going to make myself client number one, as opposed to I'll get to my stuff after I finish somebody else's stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember it was probably mid-March. I wrote a post that said, may the best content creator win. Mm -hmm. And I just started going ham. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So let's, let's, let's walk back to your journey. You worked in corporate for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Right? So I'm one of those rare people that like I studied marketing in college. I've only worked in marketing and I worked for a bunch of big seven, eight, nine figure brands. I didn't even know this was a thing growing up. When you walk in a grocery store and you see all yeah. the different brands or you walk in a mall, 
who's responsible for making sure these things are successful? I was that person, right? Mm. And in that world, it's such a status thing. Like, what's your title? And you got all these perks and, you know, you're flying around the world, a hotel lavish, and you give out your business card and everybody's like, oh, this is fancy. So that's all I knew until it wasn't serving me anymore. And so you you think about if I get to this next plateau, if I make 100000 if I get this promotion, everything will be good. If I get this much autonomy, everything will be right. dope. And then I got it, and it was anticlimactic. And I saw the other Hold side. On. So Dottie doesn't know what anticlimactic <laughs> is, if you can kind of explain it to her. So like anything, you're building up this excitement. We can even go back to dating, right? If I finally... If she says yes, or if this person says agree to the date, in my case, it was if I get this promotion, I'd already hit six figures, so that was cool. But it's like now the, the coveted spot in marketing is called being a brand manager. So you're finally the one making the decision as opposed to saying, like, let's say if you want to come out with this this hoodie, right? If I work for you, you're going to have you me to execute them? it. Show them the hoodie. How, right? how they can get on sleepersforsuckers.com. <laughs> so okay. it, let's say I work for you. My job may be to figure out what colors of this hoodie should we do next. And I can come up with a, a, a way to do it. Here's some new shoes coming out, etc. But I don't get to change the name on the hoodie. Mm -hmm. I don't get to come to you and say I got an idea for a different type of brand. So when you get to that next level, you get to be that person right. and say, we're going to take the brand this way. Because what they do is they say, you got $250 million. Donnie, you need to grow by, by 10%, $25 million this year. How you do it is up to you. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, man, I'm in the driver's seat. This is dope. And then you realize it's just a trap door. There's, like, more bureaucracy. <laughs> there's more paperwork. Mm -hmm. Now you got to lead a team of people. And I thought what I thought I wanted when I got it, it wasn't what it was. Mm, yeah, Ain't that life. Now, here's the other dopest part and what I love about corporate. I could see my future because you can see your boss and your boss boss. Yeah. And you know how long it takes. Mm. And you see their lifestyle. So if you don't want that, don't keep marching in that direction. It's illogical to think you're going to get to where they are and be able to play the game differently. Right. Yeah, so I had to make some big changes for sure. What was the scariest thing for you transitioning from corporate and making that decision that entrepreneurship is it, period? Yeah, I think it was a, um, a tangible, like real scary thing and then an emotional thing. Mm -hmm. So the real thing was I'm used to making – let's say $10,000 <laughs> every month, right? Mm -hmm. And now you have no idea when yeah. the next whatever is coming, let alone, let alone like 10000 <laughs> right? Like you got no idea. That's really scary. Some people like they back against the wall. I'm not, I, need, I need some money to cushion yeah, me yeah, between yeah. the wall. I'm not a person that's down to my last and I get creative. I, I'm down to my last and I kind of shut down. Mm -hmm. So that was the first real fear. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to prep for it by like downsizing and saving and all that stuff. But there's no way around not seeing the type of money come in that you've been seeing for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then I would say the emotional fear. It was I don't even know if it was a fear. It was probably, in hindsight, um, dealing with your ego. Mm -hmm. because you're no longer this person with all this status. Like, I was making a joke, but I used to check in hotels at 7 a.m., 10 a.m., check mm -hmm. out at 4 p.m., mm -hmm. get the corner room, get an upgrade, go to Delta, walk across the carpet, like right, it. get to drink in the glass and not the little plastic <laughs> cup. <laughs> you're drinking before glass. everybody else get on the plane, <laughs> right? I was used to being that person. And so how do you um, hold those two things in your head? Well, you believe you're successful, you know you can do something, but you no longer have the trinkets that say that this is who you are and what you can do. You voluntarily walked away or you quit? Yeah, yeah, I walked away. Like it was partly we were had already started a business that was doing well. And in my mind, we had like two consecutive $20,000 months, right? Mm -hmm. So you saw the lead up and then it like shot up and maintained. So I'm like, oh yeah, I know what to do with this. Like it's got all the signs for it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump out a little early as opposed to waiting to maybe that sixth month. Right. Um, so part of it was like, I was ready to go from corporate, and I was also excited to get into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. I did not know what entrepreneurship really was, though. Mm. Yeah. You know, I think this is a really important conversation because a lot of times we're talking to uh, someone who wants to get off the job that isn't already making six figures, mm. right? That person who's trying to, you know, figure out, well, what are the steps that I need to take to leave my job and prepare? But now we get an opportunity to talk to someone who reached a certain plateau of success in your mm -hmm. career. Now you're making six figures, you're living comfortably, you're experiencing some luxurious perks, yeah. <laughs> right? Um, and then 
to walk away from that and come out into this big unknown because it was a big unknown. I transitioned off of my job. Mm. Um, I started to build a business while I was still working. So for me, it was like, a, obviously there was an income hit because I was still making double income, yep. right? And then you transition into one. Yep. But coming out, I think it's so brave to come out and you're like, all right, well, we're about to wing this. Like, yep. what's good? <laughs> Hello, Instagram. Right. Yep. And I think what's interesting, too, is because the business that you're leaving, you have partners. Mm -hmm. So you alone, let's just say, make 10000 But now your business makes 20000 which is probably gross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? And then you got to take the profit. Mm -hmm. Most of it goes back into the company. Mm -hmm. Then you split with the other partners. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make financial sense. It does not, right? So, and a couple different things. I had enough money saved mm -hmm. where I could live for a year. So mm -hmm. all I could think about was, if I don't make this jump now, when am I gonna make it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, am I gonna make it when I'm engaged? Am I gonna make it when, I got, when I'm married with kids? Or like, what will a year cost me? Mm -hmm. Nothing's gonna go tragically wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, just give it a shot. Now I'm good at math, so I can calculate from gross to net and split it five ways and you realize, oh crap, this ain't a lot of money. Right. So it was more about seeing the growth of the company and the trajectory yeah. that made me say, all right, let me do this thing. Let me ask you this though. Yeah. Did your partners leave their businesses so or jobs? So at this time it was five of us and three of them were already full-time entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And so again, I didn't have enough context as to all of the ways in which, like how seasoned they were at entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. So there were things that I was experiencing for the first time that they weren't necessarily rocked by. Like the first time you don't make no money or the first time somebody tells you no, they don't want to buy whatever you're trying to sell mm -hmm. where they might not have an emotional hit. I'm walking away the rest of the day defeated because mm -hmm. I'm so new to this whole thing. Yeah. So um, yeah, it was kind of, everybody was in a hybrid of a mode for sure. Gotcha, gotcha. But so you're the only one that like cut off a source of income. Yeah, major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't have done it. We gotta have a meeting. <laughs> so, but no, here's <laughs> a no, round table. We gotta have a meeting. Right, but here's the thing. So um, I think it depends on what the business and what the business model is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest mistakes, you said something beautiful and I worded it differently. I thought that because work had to be done, mm -hmm. it had to be done by me. Mm. And so the biggest thing I messed up with is when I left, I could have set up a framework for myself yeah. that really would have made that transition smoother. Yeah. But I'm thinking like, if I got to have a call with a client, I've got to talk to them, schedule right. them, get on the phone with them. I don't know anything about VAs. I don't know anything about mm. somebody managing my schedule. At this point, I'm not understanding business development that I can have someone send in my pitch deck or my EPK or whatever right. else. I think I got to do all the work because over here in corporate world, yeah, you got a team, but everybody working like heck. Right. And so that was my um, just sort sort of early misconceptions when I made the jump. Gotcha. So tell us about the business that you were building while you were on your job and how that came together. So I always, it wasn't a business yet. So one of the things I heard somebody dope talk about is if you don't know how to find your niche, just think about what people. Is it niche or niche? It's both. I think it depends on how you use it. I use it both ways. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Both. All right, cool. Uh, depends on if I'm feeling fancy. Right now I'm on YouTube, I'm feeling fancy. So it's Absolutely. niche. It's niche. You know what I'm saying? You may hear me say niche. I wear my plaid up. You see this? You got the plaid button down today. So if y'all see me in the next scene with a hoodie on, I had to get comfortable. You know what's so crazy? Before we got here, Dottie, he was like, man, you wearing a hoodie? He said, dang, I should go put my hoodie on. I'm like, why? He's like, man, I dressed up. <laughs> this, <laughs> is, this is black tie. Are you like, dressed up? Yeah. But, Strands, what that tells me is that it's an indication that maybe my D isn't watching shows the way he claims he is. If he's mm, are you questioning you being in a hoodie. <laughs> You're always in a Well, I was thinking it was Thanksgiving. You know, I'm go I might put a shirt with some buttons on. Dunny got on her buttons. I got on my buttons. You know what I'm saying? I thought David might have on some buttons. I didn't David want to be the, the, the only gross. man out. Oh, the no. odd man out, rather. No. I'm sorry. Continue. What was he the has question? Shoes, though, so that is he do got the fancy gum bottoms. He got yeah. the fancy gum bottoms. Um what we was the question about, again? Um you were making a point to mention, and this was actually going to be my next question. You were talking about how some people are struggling to find something to go into business in, mm -hmm. and now leveraging. I think you were going in the oh, direction. Oh, yeah, yes, it wasn't yes. a business yeah. yet. So yeah. we were talking about niche. You yeah. tried to get me off track because I was speaking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what do people call you and ask for advice on? What do people just mm -hmm. always rely on you for? So I have been giving people business advice 
forever, even mm-hmm. before I was in business. I was a person that are like, write your business plan or at least look over it. Sometimes Because you, you, col- you went to college. Yeah, like, like this background. is, I got at least that context. And whether you make $1,000, $100, or you just do it for a friend, but I wasn't thinking about that as a business. Now, this is going to sound crazy. Because I was working with $100 million businesses, I didn't even know that there were people who made business, like I didn't know that people were running businesses making $412,000 living a great life. Yeah. Mm. So I thought that for me to do entrepreneurship, I had to work with clients who were at or wanted to be at the multi-million dollar threshold. Mm. So I, my imposter syndrome came in because I'm thinking I haven't made a million yet. Who's going to listen to me teach them how to make a million? Even though I'm managing and running millions, I don't know that there's a whole like middle of the world where people make $712,000 mm. and live a great life. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm living in... Again, $25 million, fly to Europe, launch a product, do interviews in, in Italy. So yeah. my whole world is this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I have been giving people advice, but I'm not thinking that I'm a consultant, right. right? I'm just thinking that you just look out because you have the information, put somebody else on game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when we started the t-shirt company, that was more up my alley. It was product, I knew how to grow it. I understand e-commerce, I understand physical stores. At one point we were in like six stores in the Atlanta area. So I'm thinking about buyers and accounts and Let's go to Magic. Let's go to these places and set up an infrastructure similar to what I was used to seeing. Right. Um, and then the consulting and the marketing stuff, that was the pivot after the clothing company. Mm, so yeah. how did y'all five come together on this idea? Yeah, so my homeboy, Day Day, who uh, put it all together, he and I grew up together. And you know how you got mutual respect for somebody, but you've never done business together. Mm-hmm. So we were always, when I was up late at night on Instagram, he up late at night. I'm working, he working. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, bro, we need to really sit down. Like, I don't know everything that you do, and I don't think you know everything that I do, but mm-hmm. it seemed like we got the same type of hustle. Right. So we sat down at a restaurant in Atlanta, and we were like, what are the projects that you have that you know you can't do by yourself? Like, you got to have a team. And so we were just kind of volleying back and forth, and then been Broke Before was one that was a big enough apparatus where I felt like there's a merch component, there's a story component. There's media and film component. This is media enough where you can bring in multiple people and have enough uh, space for folks to move around Mm -hmm. and grow this into, I call a platform, not just a regular brand that's tied to a product. So yeah, we sat down and talked it through and then he had the other people we all met and that was like fall 2015. Mm. This always brings us back to that word, Shans, relationships. (laughs) <laughs> for sure. Relationships. For sure. Yeah. What I am finding a common theme to be amongst people who are successful is uh, that we all leverage relationships. Yeah. And uh, and this is for, you know, anybody. It's important to understand that because there are a lot of self-made people out here, right, yeah. on the Internet saying, yeah, I did it myself. I'm eh. Along the line, I encourage everybody to kind of track down and think back and find that relationship that really got you to the next level. So for you, you're on Instagram, you see a friend. Mm -hmm. How close were y'all at that time? So we were always close enough where you're going to dab each other up and show love. We got each other number, but Mm -hmm. we didn't necessarily hanging out because I originally was in Nashville. I come back to Atlanta finding my foot. Um, But it was, it was love, but we, again, we had never done business together. Right. So the synergy sometimes and oftentimes can actually be in your circle. For sure. Yeah. 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 And speaking of relationships, like for real, for real, you remember how we met? How do we meet my day? I met David the week after I quit my job. I walked into Cumberland Mall with a Ben Broke Before shirt on. Yes. And we just started talking. And this is where I was like, I don't know if this dude is dope. Or if he trying to set me up on the Atlanta hustle. But David <laughs> said, hey, yo, I like this shirt. I just got back from Kansas City. I seen somebody yes. wearing it. So right? I was in, uh, I was with E.T. <laughs> yep. all, like we was in a, uh, we was in an airport and I saw the shirt. I was like, dang, that's cool. And I think the person knew E. And they started, they was like, hey, E.T. or whatever. And I'm like, dang, that's a dope shirt. And then I think I saw your shirt and I was like, yo, I just, yep. I just saw that. Yep. Yeah. So then I was like, yeah, I'm one of the owners. I just quit my job. Da, 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 da. The next question, do you remember? Mm-mm. And this is where I was like, he either going to be cool as heck and we going to be dope or this, that Atlanta stuff. Mm-hmm. He's like, yo, how are y'all prices? Are y'all getting good prices? How much you paying for printing? Here's how much you should be paying. He pulled out a whole pamphlet. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's dope. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we actually in the same range, but I yeah. appreciate this because most Sharing people won't give you their plug. Yeah. Most right. people won't walk you through the process. Then he was they like, made me pay for that plug, by the way. <laughs> it, was, it was 2017, and I was preparing for MegaFest, and I was printing T-shirts. 
and you made me pay for the T-shirt. No, I printed your shirts. Well, I didn't print them through David. I, we were just I comparing, you, comparing I didn't, information. I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't make you pay for the plug. I, didn't, I, printed, I, didn't, I have a print, I have, I have a t-shirt print printing company. You did print So this is what shirts. I do. Okay, and I'll just, I'll just give it to you. If you walk into the print shop, let's just say you're going to pay $6, mm-hmm. right? So if you print with me, you'll probably pay $5 because I pay 4 so you'll spend less with me than going straight to the print shop because I got that type of relationship. So that's how I built my You actually um, printed mine at cost. No, I did. Oh, I, oh, for what I pay? Yes, and that's a compliment. Thank oh, yeah, you. I gave you some love there. I don't know why I you, did you why I do a thing like that. But you I, did I, not, now all the people you of YouTube world profit. knows that. Uh, <laughs> However, relationships, I needed some shirts, and I needed them like two, three days later. And Shan. I looked up to you so much, too, because that's when we was in um, vacation, and, like, yeah. you're always on the stage, and you're in the videos and stuff like that. I'm like, yo, this girl's dope. Yeah, so. Yeah, so I got the T-shirts printed at, at cost. And I think that was that was probably the start of our working together kind mm-hmm. of relationship. I can't think of anything that we did prior to that. Right. But interestingly enough, I met you in this very same room. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, ago? at least two years ago. Two years ago at the um, Art of Articulation yeah. Conference. Yep. And me and my D just hit it off immediately. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we found out we graduated from the same high school, Dunny, even though she looks younger, is a little older. I got the, the Silver Fox vibes coming through. Yeah, but, I, uh, I graduated at least 10 years ahead of you, right? I, uh, really? I don't know if it was that long. When did you graduate? 2005. Yeah, nine. I graduated in 96. Okay. Yeah. Did you graduate in 96? Right. I did. Oh, wow. I'm a okay. whole 41-year-old kind of woman. What kind of water are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a whole 41-year-old woman out in these streets. But it was that, and I believe we connected over the color blue, and yep. there were some, um, <laughs> that's an inside joke. I want to know the jokes. Like, yeah, I got a lot of, oh, I appreciate the blue nod here. You know what I'm saying? Way yeah, to bring yeah, it full yeah. circle. I wore uh-huh. blue today specifically because we bonded over the color. Yeah, yeah. Sure, Wesley. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah, Wesley. Big blue. Yeah, you know I didn't even realize that you you had just quit your job. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like, know that. I had just quit. I was just like, yeah, I'm out of here. Mm. And then so, I bought two books, and we, we just started developing. And David was a, let me go on record, bro, for real. I'm going to give you your flowers. Yes. David was the first person to pay me to speak. Really? Was it the Art of Articulation Conference? Um, first, it was, I think, in Sleepless Nights. Then we did a couple different workshops yeah, and other things. Six, seven Figures of seven fashion. Figures fashion, Art of Articulation. And he was like, you need to get paid. And that way, anybody, if they ask you, yo, did you speak over here? What did you charge or whatever else? You can always say that you've gotten paid. Now, your rate may increase over time, but he was the first person. And this was... 2016-ish, I want to say. Man, that's awesome. Appreciate you, bro. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. No doubt. You, you add so much chance. value. And that's why, like, anybody that's known you before, like, you really skyrocketed on social media, anybody that knows you knows, when it comes to marketing, branding, and understanding business, there's nobody better. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's nobody better. Mm-hmm. But the, the following didn't reflect it. Yeah. You know no, I mean? not like at people the time. Didn't know. Yeah. Which brings me to, before we even talk about how you grew, so you were working in a job, in your career, Mm -hmm. as this marketing wizard, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have a business where you're also performing the same or utilizing the same skill set. So I know uh, one way to find something to start a business is is to ask yourself, well, what do you get paid to do already? What are you really, really good at at work? Do you feel like you're operating in your zone of genius or do you feel like this is actually what I'm purpose to do? A little bit of both. So I would say, and we can try to segue it, but like how I ended up growing, what I was born to do was communicate. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's my mission. Where I found myself being most successful at is in marketing. Okay. But this will evolve. I'll always be doing marketing. I may not always be teaching it, um, but I'm super skilled and trained at it. That's the other part. Like on the internet, it's like the wild, wild west. Mm -hmm. But I've had these multi-billion dollar companies invest lots of money into my education and training. And so Mm. part of this thing is like, I'm starting from a different place than the average person. Mm. Not on no arrogant stuff, but just what you've been exposed to. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I think it's a hybrid. It's almost like that Venn diagram type feel where um, I don't know how to separate marketing from the rest of my life, but it's, I know I didn't want to be known as a person that just markets you know, stuff. Right. So widgets and other things that people can buy. Mm-hmm. So how do you take that but use it in a way that 
serves humanity a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So in you're, you're, you're leaving your job, you're building this brand, been broke before. I mean, just the concept is amazing because yeah. everybody can relate to it, right? Absolutely. And then something happens mm-hmm. when, as your business is growing and climbing. Right? Yeah, so we lost a business partner to gun violence. Um, this was, we started in fall 2015. And for perspective, like a lot of folks, we've all grown businesses. I think we made our first 50,000 like out the trunk. We didn't mm. even fully have like bags from Uline and stuff. We just had that many relationships built. And that's also a testament to the team. So my partner, Data, and another guy, they already had a clothing brand. So we walked in understanding the business of apparel, yeah. but then just a whole lot of hustle, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so we grew to, I don't want to misquote it, but it was over the hundred, maybe around $200,000 in sales. And then our business partner passed away. Mm-hmm. And I remember like the nerdiest thing, I used to study annual reports. So looking at the future of a company mm-hmm. and what are they gonna do? One of the lines that companies always include, like if the owner is still part of the company, like Rap Lauren, mm-hmm. that we can't measure what would happen if we lost the person that owns this company. Mm-hmm. We can't guarantee we're gonna make $100 million next year if the namesake passes away. Wow. It's a risk and they bake it into their financial assumptions. I just, for me, it was just like homework assignment, something to think about. But when you're used to like, imagine us, we're sitting here and then now somebody's not sitting here. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, how do you pick up the pieces? And that's where you start to do some soul searching and you're like, how much does it mean to me? How much does the business mean to me? Um, and, and yeah, I don't know, it's kind of deep. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But So did you guys decide, I, I, because I don't know that story. I know I've seen the Been Broke Before brands mm-hmm. everywhere. What, what is going on with it today? So it's still alive. Um, we're not actively like meeting and marketing and, and doing those things. I think it's, we're probably just in a longer period of therapy. You know what I mean? Still grieving. Yeah, so grieving. I think there are multiple tentacles that we could decide to fire back up. The merch is one of them. The financial literacy piece is another. The philanthropic things that we've been doing in the community is another. And so I'm optimistic that organically, we're gonna kind of come back together and as they say, a water finds its own level, like we'll balance it out. Um, but from a business standpoint, I don't think there was a way to calculate or, you know what I mean, like come up with a plan to go through this thing. What was his role? Man, listen, 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 listen. If you were on the outside looking in, you could easily like, I'm, I got a personality and a presence. So you might be like, okay, maybe this dude be uh, running stuff. And then Day Day is a mad scientist. He's somebody that don't do a lot of interviews, but I'm gonna introduce y'all because I think he'll kill it here. Oh. Um, and you can see how his brain work and how he pieces things together. So you might be like, no, nah, he, he might be the one that's quarterback and everything. So Jalal was the operations person. Like mm. I say this all the time, we sold thousands of hoodies and t-shirts. I've probably folded five. It wasn't mm. my job. They were always folded. They were always stickered in number. All I had to do was concentrate on telling the story so that we could sell them. Right. So when you lose that person, you like let's talk about it for real. You gotta go pick up 20 boxes of shirts mm-hmm. or get them mailed to the location. Yeah. And then you get over there and the printer is delayed. So now you gotta move them to another location. Like yeah. he was the muscle. Mm. And so you try to replace the person that wow. operationally keeps the business together I ain't even cut from that. Like, wow. I don't even have that type of, I'm, for real, like, mm-hmm. I, I'm kind of brainy. So I don't know how to, like, take pride in that level of the work. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't even know how much everybody was doing that I couldn't see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So he was, mm-hmm. and, and he was the, like. I can see the breakdown. Yeah. Because who goes, who does it now? Who does like, it? And you're like, okay, I don't really know. I don't got a relationship with the supplier like that. I don't know these I, folks, right? Yeah, like, yeah. who does it, right? And then, like, in the group part, like, let's say the three of us, we want to come up with a business idea. And Which we will. <laughs> let's do it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. If two people are on the extreme, who's going to bring them to the middle? He right. was that person. So mm-hmm. if I want to do red and you want to do blue, who's going to be like, yo, let's just do red and then do blue? And you're like, you know what? We Why can do that. Why do we think of that? So um, in so many ways, he was the glue is what I would say. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And obviously just on the heaviness of, like, we're not super inspired to go build. 
what we it's not the same yeah it's just not the same because you envision building it together yeah right sure. like you know the impact every time i see somebody and i still got on the shirt on they like been broke me too i'm broke now yeah, right yeah. it's still <laughs> one of those things where you gotta like respond to it mm -hmm. but you you dream together so yeah. you think about like what you gonna do when we get the yeah. money what you gonna buy right right right, right. um so, and so again i think we'll we'll figure it out and so after that how did my d yeah give it? So um, after that, I hit my version of rock bottom. So financially, emotionally, all that stuff kind of collided. Mm -hmm. And so I'm from Atlanta area, but my family is from Griffin, which is like an hour south. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, I gotta go home. Like I gotta just go regroup and figure this whole thing and out. What, what year is this? This is 2017. Okay. Yeah. So I'm coming from doing this thing I'm not in the healthiest places. And I didn't even have these words back then. Like all I knew is that I just feel off and I need to figure some stuff out, right. figure some stuff out, right? But like I went all the way, like moving back with your mama back home. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm like, mama be here for six months. Yeah. It's gotta be Max. late 2017 though. Cause it was, eight, I think like 18 was the impact though. As far as? In terms of like uh, when it happened, it ha he passed away in 17. I'm sorry, yes, 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 yes. So yeah. he passed away in fall of 17. Right. Um, I, that, yeah, like I probably say bottomed out late 17 going into early 18. Gotcha, Thank gotcha. you for that, appreciate yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so uh, my current, one of my current business partners, we had worked together. He had photographed some stuff for Ben Broke before, and I liked the way he worked, right? Again, I'm nerdy, so I sent him a design brief. Like, here's the logo concept, and here's what the brand means, and here's where we're going. He's like, dude, let me just draw. No, 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 no. He was like, yo, I've never had a design brief. Like, this is dope, but I'm coming from corporate again. Um, I'm going to start brief, giving though. my designers a design brief. Yeah, so a design brief, language. right? The biggest misconception, or I would say the biggest gap, is between people who can't draw or create the things. Like, you got it in your mind. Mm -hmm. How do you put it in language for right. the person who can see it mm -hmm. in pictures? Yeah. And so typically what you work through is like, what's the hierarchy? What's the non-negotiable? So for example, if we were gonna design something for Sleep is for Suckers, we might say, you have to spell it out. Sleep is for Suckers goes on the back of the shirt, whatever this position is called, mm -hmm. right? We want, you know, must use colors red and white, open to additional colors looking to do blah, blah, and blah, looking mm. for fun, looking for serious or whatever. Because if not, like fonts and shapes all have energy. Personal. Mm -hmm. If you were gonna build a mm -hmm. brand for your daughter that was gonna be marketed to kids, you might wanna use a mascot. You might wanna use a certain brightness of color. Mm -hmm. And so you can't just assume that that designer knows all this stuff. Mm. And so okay. you try to put it into a formalized language. You know what I love about you is your art, how articulate you are and the way Appreciate that it, you- Appreciate it, so, right. <laughs> so, girl. I'm sitting here saying, oh, I'm going to start giving my designers a design brief. And I do. I just call it an email where I, you know, I'm, I'm going to just tell you exactly what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. But now you've put like this name to it. And that's what that's what helps me to see you in a standout way in the area of marketing. I appreciate it. Because seriously, because. When you communicate what you're communicating, you can tell like a dancer who's classically trained. You're a classically trained brand <laughs> yeah. genius, right? Um, and, and I appreciate that language outside of just pixels and analytics and mm -hmm. Facebook ads and YouTube ads. Like, let's actually talk the philosophy behind mm -hmm. it so that people understand and brands understand what exactly is making you successful. Yeah, and I think most people, like you've been exposed to marketing and branding so long, it's mm -hmm. easy to think that you know how to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So I say, if you, we've been hearing Spanish by living in America all of our lives. Mm -hmm. Even if you know some words, if you put them in the wrong order, you're not speaking Spanish, mm -hmm. right? So the modifier goes before like if you're gonna say the strong man, right? They say man and then strong. We say strong and then man when you arrange the language, right? Mm -hmm. So marketing and branding is the same way. Let's say we were gonna launch Dunny's House of Fashion. Okay. Well, which, which word is more important? Dunny, house, or fashion? Mm -hmm. You gotta tell me in a hierarchy. Is fashion what we're building? Is Dunny what we're celebrating? Is house the thing? Mm -hmm. Because if not, if all of those occupy equal weight, so they're all saying Dunny's House and Fashion, my, I don't know what to prioritize. Mm. So again, you might think in your head, naturally, I want Dunny in cursive 
and in house of fashion to be together. You got to tell somebody that. You got to tell them. And mm. when you're dealing with the highest levels, you get charged for this. Yeah. Because they're going to say, I got three options. You got two rounds of revision. And then after yeah. that, you're paying this per sure. hour yeah, cost. So you better be very clear. You better clear. be clear, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, a, that's yeah. a nugget. So there are uh, people who are watching this who are hiring someone on Fiverr right now or Dope. someone that they know or whatever the case the may be. Right. Yeah. And they're like, hey, I just want this logo for Donnie Wiggins. Well, when you do that, you are assuming, number one, that that designer's uh, style matches your style mm -hmm. because they all have a signature. Mm -hmm. And in order to perform outside of their signature and their thought of what it should be, you have to be very, very descriptive mm -hmm. down to the colors, down to, you know, I like to send examples of font styles that I like. Yep. I like to send examples of websites that I like. Yep. I like to send examples of brand stories yep. that I like. And that's important to do. Tell us, my D, because it would look to the blind eye. I remember when you really started to take off on Instagram. <laughs> and at first, you were kind of repurposing other cool content that you saw on the uh -huh. internet and giving credit. And now you're doing, you know, I think you still infuse a little bit of that and then coming up with organic things. Uh -huh. So people would assume, the untrained eye would assume that you blew up and marketing really is just posting memes and pictures on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy, right? So I think I was doing, like a lot of people, treating social media like an afterthought, like a journal, like a diary, like a blog, where you just randomly dilly-dally in it, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember, and not to cut you off, you so that, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm thinking through the years of like 2018, maybe like early 2019, because you would make posts like, yo, um, hey, uh, I, I'm thinking about going to get a, a, a job again. What y'all think? Yeah. And I'm like, yo, I, <laughs> yo but, but the transparency, it yeah. did feel like a journal. Cause yeah. yo, I'm, I'm up in corporate. I lead that. I'm up in business. Uh, I just want to let y'all know it ain't what it used yeah. to be. Yeah. So I, I'm thinking about going back to corporate. Yeah. Should I do it? And so it was I was dope. doing, and now I still do it a little bit, but I call it like sketching or like, have you ever seen how a comedian builds their set? Like they go out and they practice the jokes mm -hmm. and they refine them and all that stuff. So like I knew the power of social, but I hadn't found my voice on it yet. So to your point, you try to find your voice through other people's voice. Yeah. So you like, I would probably write a quote like that. Let me share this. Mm -hmm. Or I like the way this person's shirt look. Let me shout them out. Because I hadn't arrived in my own space yet. Right. And again, for perspective, I don't know that I'm going through my version of depression or my version mm. of humbling, bottoming out. I'm just in it. Yeah. Right. And so you don't know that you you haven't found your voice. You're just right. trying to express yourself. Yeah. So I can look back on it now and go, oh, I know exactly what was happening. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the words. So I was borrowing people's words. Mm -hmm. Now you go, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. You better remember who you are. Like you yeah. better know what you're standing on. And so once I started doing all my own original stuff, it made a difference. Mm -hmm. And then people talk authenticity, but it's layers to this. So I tell folks, you don't have to just jump off into the deep end day one, mm. but start peeling a layer back. So yeah. for me, that first post of like, I'm thinking about getting a job, that's layer one, mm. right? The next layer might be like, and here's the emotion behind why, right? So you don't have to always just air your dirty laundry per se, but what people are looking to connect with is real people. Mm -hmm. So if I said, let me use my real words, let me process through my real emotions, let me teach the stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm trying my best not to turn into Gary Vee and just be cussing on y'all's show, <laughs> but I cuss a lot, right? But uh, let me um, let me tell my story in my voice, right? Mm -hmm. And so social started to reflect that, yeah. and the growth started to happen. Question. Yeah. Answer. Did you go back to get a job at any point after no, that? No. So alone. here's here's <laughs> what, yo yo over. No, I didn't go. I didn't. I know my. I did not go. Groceries? I was not. Listen, listen. <laughs> Cause I, I, I mean, I, I had some. Maybe I could drive Uber moments. Oh, for sure, for sure. Chance yeah. called me one time, like, "Hey, bro, on the low, you probably." Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Nobody on the gram gonna see so you look, driving Uber. But let's put it in context, cause it's a big world, right? So right. what's happening in this gig economy is people are realizing, like, your time is valuable. Money is you can be made in a bunch of different ways. So I salute the folks that's like, let me get out here. They're sketching, right? Let me get out here and hustle up some stuff right. till I figure it out. I didn't go back. Here's what happened. I remember this vividly. Now, thank you for the timestamp. Summer 2008, my homegirl hit me up. She said, Madi, I got one for you. I'm like, what's up? She said, there is a, I'm going to have to drop the name for context. There's a brand manager job on Coca-Cola or at Coca-Cola 
on Coca-Cola. 2018. 18. I'm sorry, 2018. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's a brand manager job at Coke on Coke. Not the Sunny, not Fanta, mm-hmm. not Smart Water. Oh, on Coca-Cola. The granddaddy brand. Yeah, like <laughs> if I'm gonna go back to marketing, there are only a few companies where you can slap on your resume mm-hmm. and they like, oh, you work for Nike? Yeah. You work for Coke? Mm-hmm. All right. So she's like, it's on Coke. All you gotta do is send me your resume. I'm gonna put it on the hiring office manager's desk. And even better, one of the people on the interview panel, she knows you from the other company mm. and she wants you to apply. I'm like, you basically handed me a job here. You put me, me right back at the level of comfort. You put my name right back at the level of brands. Y'all, I started sitting there trying to write my resume. I'm like, spearheaded. <laughs> nah, that ain't it. Like, uh, led and developed. <laughs> nah, that. I couldn't eat, and I know the words, was right? I did in it. In charge uh, of, but my like, there was some visceral reaction that's like, nah, this ain't your story, and if you got to keep pushing through, push through. So that was the day that I committed to it. Mm. Other than that, I was just a couple, you know, toes in the water, just seeing what happened. But when I could not go through that process and dang near take a guaranteed job at one of the dopest brands. I was like, oh, this entrepreneurship thing about to do what it do. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 So just, just for context, because I don't, I don't know if Donnie knows the word visceral. <laughs> visceral. visceral. Just like sometimes something happens, like a knee jerk, like an automatic reaction, mm-hmm. like you tense up or you relax. So I had this almost um, subconscious type reaction to it, mm. and I knew I couldn't keep going. Like, mm. I couldn't. That's crazy. And it's something you can't really explain. Like, why can't I? This is what I do. I can't get it. But you knew what you're. Yeah. And people like your friends around you, they love you, but they might think you ego tripping because they're like, bro, how long are you going to stay at your mama house figuring this thing mm-hmm. out? Right. Like, why won't you go back to the level of luxury that you used to? Mm-hmm. Bro, you tripping. Oh, you went right? to your mom house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went home home. You, you know me? what? Because body was like, yeah, I was going to move down to Griffin. No, yeah, no, I no. Like, I'm thinking, oh, what makes a man relocate to I mean, my, my, my stepdad had a house. My mom had a house. Mm-hmm. They had a shared space. So it wasn't yeah. like I didn't go back into, into poverty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I went back into luxury. <laughs> but I went to my mom's house for sure. Right. Nice situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shams, just so anytime dope. in your journey, did you have to go back to mom's house? Um. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Well, no. Well, when I was working at... I was working at um, uh, Applebee's in college, then I came back home, obviously, stayed at my mom. And then me and my cousin, we wound up getting a, um, an investment property. It was a triplex, so I moved into one. And um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have to go back. Mm, I did. So let's make it contextual, right? Mm. So You didn't care to know the fact oh, that Oh, my I, fault, I thought you were just. No, I'm just. She asked know. me the question, so that. She could get into now her I see why, now, I, now I see why they be putting them comments on you. You are gonna do me like this? I'm they sorry. Her filthy. Go for ahead. Go, no, okay, no, 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 go for it. You know, tell you, us you a story. Just, I don't want to tell the story. I just, I'm past the moment. However, I was just you know because you explained your position, I allowed David to explain his. In fact, I encouraged the response. <laughs> and um, just, when, when was this? Maybe you guys wanted just, to know. Just for context, did. when did you have to move back? Um, 2008 to 2010 during the first economic crash mm. that I've ever experienced as a grown mm. person in my life. Yeah, I lost everything and um, we don't have to get, it's, it's in my version of the podcast, my episode of you interviewing me. Mm. I forget which episode yeah. that is, but yeah, I lost everything and I had to go, not just me, but me and my daughter mm-hmm. had to go back to my childhood bedroom mm-hmm. to share, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's cool. Yeah. Just, but, but because, and I think that's just an important part to highlight because so many people are like, you were obviously embarrassed by the fact that you had to do that because you didn't necessarily share that you had to do that. Right. Oh, I'm moving to Griffin. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I'm about getting okay. a spot. So, like, yeah, so a it's, Griffin, it's, that's I, where I say the, the layers. So the mm-hmm. first layer is like, oh, I'm moving to Griffin, but like all on my social, I talk about it right mm-hmm. over mm-hmm. time. Once you get comfortable not with Not at first, though. No, no, that's what I say. Yeah, not oh, at first. That's the layers, yeah, right? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, but let me add some context that makes it applicable for somebody who's listening. Do me a favor real quick before you do that. Try to stick to two and then simple three syllables oh because David gosh. is over there. I see, I'm, I'm trying to help my homie out. You know what? I know what applicable. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm Root word. You know what I'm saying? There we go. So look, it's just money in, money out. Right. So for people trying to figure out entrepreneurship, you need to be mindful of your money in and your money out. Mm-hmm. So this might mean 
you can get a roommate, charge them five hundred dollars. That's now money in mm. where you were about to shell out five hundred more dollars of money out. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Now you can take this and run your first Facebook ad. Now you can take this and buy more inventory. So sometimes it's not like you got to bottom out financially. You're just recalculating the money, right? right? So you, maybe you need to move in with somebody. Maybe you need to move somebody in. Maybe you need to downsize. I don't need four bedrooms if it's just me. Yeah. I can take this $1,800 mortgage and put it into $1,400. Now I got yeah. $400 more yeah. that can be working for me. I can hire a VA with this money. I can do whatever yeah. else. So I think sometimes we add emotion where it doesn't need to go. Yeah. And we can just make it black and white. So for anybody that's thinking through, like, how do I manage this? Typically, the two biggest costs or the three biggest costs are going to be where you live, what you drive, and what you're eating. So if you want to figure exactly. out a way to inject money back into your business, find a way to get some money back from those things. Would you awesome. recommend, what do you feel about group economics in terms of like, hey, listen, why do we all have to be struggling to get by trying to become entrepreneurs when we could all really just get like this townhouse, right? The three or four of us could get a three, four bedroom townhouse mm -hmm. and split money. Um, for whatever reason, the stigma associated with that is like, oh, you got roommates, you're 30 something years old, 40 something years old. But think of all the people who didn't start really yeah. progressing in business until they were 40 something, 50 yeah. something years old. What do you feel about group it, economics in that sense? It makes a million dollars worth of sense. And the people who say that it don't, I'm not bought into that value system anymore. I can't mm. even relate. What, mm. what, what's glamorous about struggling if you don't have to? Right. So move in together, save the money. The critical thing is don't blow the money. Yeah, for sure. So if you whether you're going to save it and you don't know what you're going to do with it yet or whether you're going to put it towards a business or you're going to put it towards real estate and investing. But I, like a lot of what we've gotten, especially in our culture, has just been well-intentioned people. But it's been bad advice. Yeah. 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 Right. So kicking our kids out at 18 and saying you grown, figure it out. Are they really right? Mm -hmm. Some kids are more mature than others. But can they really take on what this whole big world has to offer? And should that be your place? Like if they, if you got the room already, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. It's already um, their stuff inside. Yeah. Right? So like why are we kicking them out? Yeah. And I think as you guys can attest to it, one of the things that you need to succeed in entrepreneurship is you got to know how to manage your ego. And so there's no better way than to put yourself in some, or life will put you in some humbling situations. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. I think what's awesome is. No matter what the situation is, you are still you, and you still have the information that's inside of you. Right. Out, and outside of the outside factors, right? Because life is going to hit you with certain yeah. things that a lot of times you don't have control over, right? Yeah. So you're like, yo, I'm going to make the best decision for me. So we're, you know, hitting this emotional, um, this emotional period of your life, yeah. right? And it changed when Coca Cola. You, you got this job at Coca Cola. You said, "Yo, I'm not. I'm not moving backwards. I'm still my D. Yeah. I'm still entrepreneur. I've been yeah. teaching this stuff for the yeah. last few years. What do we do from there?" Yeah. So first, let me go over one thing. It was beautiful. Um, do you realize that most of the time people don't say this stuff to us? We say it back to ourselves in our brain. Like if I walk and get in first class, nobody goes, oh, you're amazing. You got money. You're in first class. You in your own head stroll by everybody and right. project the story that you think that they're saying about you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So the same thing happens whether you up or down. When I was flying all around the world and cashing my checks, mm -hmm. you telling yourself the story that you think people <laughs> are saying about right, you. Right, right. So if you, you like you cannot let the situation or circumstance like mm -hmm. rock you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now I forgot the question. Yeah. So the, the question is. <laughs> like what changed yep. because you're saying, okay, now I'm serious after I'm yep. not taking this job. Uh -huh. I can't find the words. Yeah. It's, it's so, just not for me. What changed? So me and my business partner, we were, um, we started a small marketing agency, right? And we were meeting at the coffee shop. There was our office. Shout out to Ish. What up Ish? Um, and what up safe house coffee shop in Griffin. They just let us set up shop, right? We almost had a mailbox there. And we're taking whatever size jobs we can get. Donnie need a logo for a thousand dollars? Bet. Shans need a photography for six hundred dollars? Bet. Let's just figure this thing out. We had an opportunity to pitch for a pretty big job um, to do a rebrand. I don't want to say the company, but a governmental agency in town, right? Mm -hmm. And we're thinking like, what should we put as the price for this thing? And we were like, can we say ten thousand dollars? Like, yeah, this feels like ten thousand dollars worth of work. Like, mm -hmm. this is a lot of work. This is gonna take. Six months. But mm -hmm. this is why I also am not a fan of people doing entrepreneurship when you're broke. 
because mm. it's your mindset that will yeah. trip you up more than the money. Mm. You get so insecure or you get so locked into how you see the world that like Ish said, hey man, give me the weekend. Let me go back and look over everything and then come up with a number. Monday, now Friday, we trying to, we trying to work up the nerve to say 10,000. Mm -hmm. Monday, he says, this should be 30,000. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you for real? He's like, yeah. I'm like, you feel good about it? He's like, yeah. I say, I'll pitch it, no problem. Walked in there, we pitched it, the CEO, Flash. I mean, we went and took pictures and everything. Mm -hmm. Look, look, got to the money page, investment, not cost, mm -hmm. not price, mm -hmm. investment. We broke it down, itemized. He said, yeah, this looks like about what I'm used to paying. Mm, what if that thing said 10? Ooh, did and you, then after that, you ain't the same person. You yeah. are not the same person yeah. after you charge what you are You're worth. You're not the same person. You're not the and same. And even if the price goes down, you now got a different swagger, a different confidence. You can accurately price jobs for what they need to be priced. And so I got things that go up or down, but you, I never have to worry about saying the price anymore after mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. But, All right, so you get, you get that contract. Yeah. You're doing that government thing yeah. for a while. So then that turned into retainer. So you learn how the agency model works. You get a big job and you impress them and you want to keep some more money. So that was now an annual contract. Mm -hmm. So now you can breathe because you're like, all right, I got my eat money, right? right? So now you want to find other people at this space. And what we ran into was scaling an agency is extremely hard because you can't go find the work and do the work and at the same the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I'm meeting with you, who's designing the logo, mm -hmm. right? If we taking the pictures, who's taking this person out to lunch? Mm -hmm. And so you run into this conundrum where it's almost like feast or famine. You get a big contract or a couple big ones, you're doing well, you're working on those, there's no time to go cultivate another one because you don't wanna promise somebody something you can't do. Mm -hmm. And so you up and then you down, and then you up and then you down. Mm -hmm. And so we were trying to figure out a way to stabilize this. When you up, you're like, let's hire some people. When you're down, you're like, woo, we will be ourselves. <laughs> ourselves, right? And so the, it evolved into more of the business model that it is now. So mm. I still take clients in a small sort of very, uh, um, what's the word I heard done? You very exclusive way, mm. right? You can still work with me, get at mm. your boy. Right. But most of what I do is teaching at scale now. So whether it be an online class or whether it be something else, I don't do as much of the one-on-one -on -one cause it's just not scalable. Yeah, and that, this is why I, I teach a lot of my clients, forget what you're building, become something. Become the type of person that can build something because no matter what the circumstances are, mm -hmm. you won't be down long if you're the type of person right. who knows how to get up. Mm. You know what I mean? It, it, if you, be, like, know, whether you move to Griffin, Georgia, or I start a new business, if you become something, if you yep. start reading and studying, like, you've been in marketing since 2000, what, six, 2000? Yeah, yeah, like, I took my first marketing class in 2006. I graduated right. college in 2009. You've been doing I've this been for it. 14 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does. It doesn't. Whether you're you're, you're marketing an agency, a t-shirt brand, mm -hmm. a hat, a sock, a service, mm -hmm. you become something. So I just want to encourage people that are watching, man, like, Grow. Yeah. Yes. Don't focus on build. I mean, you want to build what you're building, what you're putting your hands on, but you need to work on your hands being the type of thing that can build something. Yeah. Because no matter what life throws at you, you'll be yeah. able to get out of it. And and people always ask about like personal brand versus a business brand. Here's my my real raw thoughts on personal brand. Build something that matters and raise your hand as the person that did it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as opposed to like trying to create yourself into something yeah. and you haven't built anything. Yeah, now they can sure. coexist, but at the end of the day, you can go, wait, you built Walmart, you built Nike, mm -hmm. right? You, oh shit, um, sorry y'all. <laughs> Here's the personal brand, Phil Knight. He can just appear, right? Mm -hmm. Will Smith wasn't on Instagram for years. Mm -hmm. He had been Will Smith, he had built some things and he just showed up and was like, I'm here. And the followers started doing backward flips for into, sure, you know what I mean? Sure. So build something that matters, yeah. uh, and then it makes the personal stuff even easier. So I think it's cool to jump into now, man. The, you know, the the process, right? So take me yeah. through your social media journey and how do you come up with this stuff? Bro? <laughs> Jeremy Anderson called me one day. He said, "Yo, how does my D come up with this stuff?" And I, was, yo, I, I think I probably heard that from like three people. Like, how does he come up with this? Stuff? So walk me through your journey in terms of your numbers, yeah. um, your growth, and let's walk people how they can do the same thing. Shout out to Jeremy, man. Jeremy sends me at least one audio message a month just checking in. <laughs> Jeremy, big, and I told oh, this God. story on Instagram Live the other day. 
You remember you hosted a live podcast and you interviewed Jeremy? Mm-hmm. I was here. I literally left. Like, I had too much more. I heard what I needed to hear. Mm. I'm not sticking around, like, dap you up. Like, I got the inspiration. I just went and drove all the way back to Griffin and started working. Wow. So I think a lot of times, even this, if you've heard what you need, mm-hmm. go put it in action. Yeah. If you've heard enough to say, now I'm going to rent a room out to my sister and use that $500, turn the video off. Right, I don't want to not turn the audio off. Let that joint run. <laughs> I don't want to uh, let it run. Views, right, man. we need the, we need the ads <laughs> and the views. But you get what I'm saying. Like sometimes you you don't have to sit with this stuff as long as you think you need to. Mm-hmm. So how did this whole social thing happen? Um, it started in 2019. Mm-hmm. So around March, April 2019 is when I said I'm gonna commit to posting three to five times per day, every day. Whether we up or down, whether it's good mm. or bad, your birthday, my birthday, Jesus' birthday, I'm going to post three to five times per day. If I just show up and do the work and get my ego out of how many likes, comments, saves, and shares, let's see what happens. Mm. So the first thing is, if you do the work, two things are going to happen. Either one, you're going to get so embarrassed because the content going to be so bad, folks are going to start stop liking, mute, unfollow, and either that's going to crush you or he's going to inspire you to create better content. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so I did. I knew marketing, right? But I didn't fully understand Instagram content mm-hmm. from pure original. So let me just show up and do the work. Yeah. And then what happens is you post three things. One thing does better than the other two. You put it to the side. And you do three more, and one does better than the other two, and you put it to the side. And then you do three more. Now you got three that's done well. But one of those three has done better than the other three. So do you post the three in like, do you, are you posting in the archiving now or are you just leaving them So all it up? just depends. But like, you don't have to archive it. I think you're just looking at it. You're just studying it, right? Mm-hmm. So, and you want to say, well, what was I talking about? Because these are the three that always do well. And then you can pair them against each other. It's like A-B testing or mm-hmm. A-B-C testing in this case. And so what you're left with is really, really good content that's repeatable and if you know what you're trying to accomplish. So for me, I go for a filling in the content. So not just enough to say, hey, if you um, take $500 and invest it in ads, you will be able to scale this to 10 grand. But give me the filling. Yeah. Like the filling is you got that third bedroom. It feels comfortable to say you have a three bedroom house. It don't feel comfortable to say that your sister live with you. However, Moving your sister in will bring you five hundred extra dollars per month, and then you take this money and put it into. So, like, I give them more emotion, not just the logical, factual piece. Mm-hmm. Um, and we can get into that in a little more detail. But like, it started in two thousand nineteen. I started showing up. Followers were where? Thirty five hundred. Thirty five hundred. Yeah, something like that. So I um, social proof, right? When people going around and you're like meeting folks and who is this and who is that, somebody said this is how your ego can motivate you though. Somebody was like, what's your name? And I'm like, I'm Marty, and I'll like, speak later. And they was like, are you on Instagram? I was like, yeah. They like, you only got 3,500 followers. <laughs> I was like, but I, they know something you don't know, right? <laughs> you just we don't know I'm dope <laughs> you yet. You just okay. don't know I'm dope yet, right? Sometimes you need that. Um, so posting frequently was my first thing, right? Mm-hmm. And then you get, get, you get better. What else starts to happen, and this the real, this the real thing, Content creators, y'all got to come up with content every day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My job was like, I want you on that day where you ain't got nothing to just bow out and give it to me and repost my stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what? Psh, mm-hmm. This is better than what I would write. You know what? I ain't got no video. Let me share his. So then you get larger Ooh. people starting to amplify your message. Mm-hmm. And then I start, once I started seeing the daily follower increase, I said, I'm on to something. And mm. I know my numbers numbers. So like 2018, I averaged three new followers per day. 2019, I averaged 17 new followers per day. This year, I'm averaging 140 new followers every day. Mm. Mm. But people ask, it's easy to keep going now. I got 60 some thousand. How you keep going when you're only getting three new people? Yeah. You got to show up for the process. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So you're showing up. A part of it is... I want to have so much that for these big accounts, if you can't think of nothing, just I got go on you. and grab them my day. I got you. And then here's the other part. Don't nobody got three to five things to talk about every day, which means you better start reading some books. Mm-hmm. You better start listening to some podcasts. Yeah. You better start watching some documentaries. If not, you will run out of stuff to say. So yeah. people be like, bro, how do I keep coming up with something? You need to keep learning. Yeah. yeah. If not, yeah, how many times are you going to show me this hoodie? 
right? Mm -hmm. Give me something. Mm -hmm. And so you can't give what you don't have. So mm -hmm. it's for me, it's a reverse engineering way into pushing people into personal development. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. So in the beginning, my D, um, your posts were really focused on just like pure entertainment. Mm -hmm. You were foolishness, <laughs> just <laughs> foolishness, yep. right? Um, how did you, did you, did if you had to do it all over again, would you start like that? Or would you start with the kind of content that you post today that talks more about business? Because sometimes that transition from going to the funny, from, from going from the funny and entertaining, and now having people wanting to like pay you money mm -hmm. for your marketing expertise. Was mm -hmm. that transition I difficult? I still think he blends though. I haven't seen I haven't Well, he seen blends him go, now, yeah. but in the beginning, it was pure <laughs> foolishness. <laughs> so y'all crazy. <laughs> You don't need. This why you don't need old friends. Quit bring up, quit bring up old stuff. Hilarity. But like, like, let's, let's real talk though. Let's tell the longer story, right? So for me, on on, let's just speak, pay, take Instagram. At first, my page was private because, like everybody else, you work in a job and right, you don't want right, to be that right. person that like they don't know you got two personalities. Right. They don't know nothing about code switching. <laughs> right. So you're like nervous again. Yeah. This starts to infect the way you see the world. Now you think I got to shrink. Yeah. Anything I gotta hide. Mm -hmm. So when I first, I remember the, the day I made my my page public, it was like liberation. Mm -hmm. And so all the ratchet and the fun came from feeling like you've been bottled up for so long. So it's just like meme or video or whatever else. Let me get this thing out. Mm -hmm. And then when I said this thing is for real, right? You got eight billion people in the world. You have a billion people every month on Instagram. Five hundred million people every day on Instagram. You can change your life. Mm -hmm. All right, let me get for real. Put on that marketing stuff that you know. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So um, you did consciously say, okay, yeah, of because this part, let me get for real. So the first part was I was making my money away from social, so I didn't see social as a route into business. Okay. Like when you go get these contracts, these people ain't checking your Instagram, mm -hmm. right? They like, can you do what you say you can do? Yeah. Show me past examples of your work. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so I didn't have no pressure to make money from Instagram. Got you. Okay. So that's also how I was able to push out so much content is that I wasn't trying to monetize. Yeah. So I didn't start, sell. I sold one thing in 2018, it bombed. And I was like, I will never bomb again. <laughs> right? I won't do this again. So I didn't sell my first thing again until 2020. Mm -hmm. Just content, value and content. Yeah. yeah. Sure, and then sure. I had to find my voice. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So a lot of folks, they're in that space now where you got some dope stuff, you don't know how to package it up. Right. And then you gotta have the, um, like you gotta get out of your head. And I'm an overthinker, you gotta just get this stuff out there and let it yeah. sort of do whatever it needs to do. Mm. So um, so you now have a, a program, the 100K Campaign. Campaign. Yeah. So tell me about that. So um, this is one of those things that was, I didn't have the words again, but I found myself in this. I was coming from looking at millions. That was my concept of entrepreneurship. Why would you start a business if you don't want to be a millionaire? Yeah. Just go work a job yeah. and take have weekends, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's how I thought. And I'm talking to one of my buddies and he's like, bro, you're stressing yourself out with this mm -hmm. million dollar thing. Like you know how to build a hundred thousand dollar business, right? I'm like, yeah, you built some, right? right. Yeah, you've helped other people, yeah. Teach that. I'm like, boy, you're brilliant. <laughs> well, you brilliant. Genius. You're genius, right? <laughs> you're brilliant. So uh, I start doing some research. It's an average 150 something million working Americans. What percentage of Americans with jobs do you think make 100 figures? Oh, I'm sorry, six figures or more? 5%? 5%? What do you think? 3%? I think it's about 3%. So depending on the population, at Across America, it's about 10% of people are over six figures. Mm. In the black community, it's like 3%, right? Gotcha. Mm. Network marketing told us 5%, wasn't it? It could change, really? right? We're talking to our community, though. You know? right. So I look, think in that community, yeah. So now you got 90% of people with jobs. And even though we're entrepreneurs, the world starts to look like you, but most people ain't entrepreneurs. Right. Most people work a job, right? So 90% of folks working jobs don't make six figures. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, well, what do entrepreneurs make? And now let's talk about net, right? Mm. You, you made a post oh, about- Oh, you're talking about no, uh, no. Uh, people who have jobs. Yeah, or people with regular jobs. With regular jobs, gotcha, okay. This, so entrepreneurs is, entrepreneurs is about the same. So you right. only got about 5% of entrepreneurs that are really getting over that level. Mm -hmm. But most people is a single person running your job. It's just Mighty Wooder LLC and I'm Mighty Wooder. Mm. Mm -hmm. And those folks are making 47 grand, 82 yeah. grand, 71 grand, and you're keeping 24,000 after taxes or whatever else. So I'm like, before we start like celebrating high five and tens and hundreds of millions and selling out in 30 seconds, 
the everyday person, you telling me six grand a month extra won't change your life? Yeah. 7,200 won't help you out? For sure. So I'm like, let me focus in on this thing. And so we are four months in, which feels crazy because I'm like, it feels longer than that. We're four months into this whole sort of revolutionary thinking on my end, which is helping people understand the information and get the tools and resources to build a six-figure business. Mm -hmm. um, and so it sort of has two components. There's a membership club piece for folks that want that longer sort of camaraderie, that want to learn and grow over time. And then I teach one to two classes per month that are subject-based. So if you want to figure out how to grow your Instagram, how to monetize, how mm -hmm. to do whatever. Um, and so people kind of come in the front of the funnel that way. And then they've got options for how they want to stay and stick around. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And so so what? What? who do you recommend this, um, this 100K campaign for? So I think it's two people that really, really benefit from it. And the first person is the one who's, you've got the ideas, you've got like, you want to do this thing, right? You're past the point of like, should I jump? You're just really trying to get the right information. Yeah. Because on, again, on the internet, it's the wild, wild west. You can't tell that the info is out of order. You yeah. don't know who's credible and who's not. Right. We were just talking about how people can fudge their numbers and right. copy and paste and make graphs. Yeah, you can't so for, see the course until you buy it. Yeah, so for yeah. the person that's like, yo, <laughs> I want like to get the, from a trusted source, I would say that's a critical person. Mm -hmm. And so if before you sign up for the annual thing, take a class. Mm -hmm. I ain't greedy, I'll take your money and apply it towards the bigger purchase. Mm -hmm. We ain't tripping, right, it's all mm -hmm. good. Um, so that's first. The second is the seasoned business person that consistently can't make 100,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's humble enough to say, I've been trying to do it my way. Mm -hmm. I'm open, like really open to being coached through this process. Mm. Cause I may just be one or two things off from getting it, but for whatever reason, my three years of trying this ain't been working, yeah. right? And so what's dope about it is that we're able, I heard you on Clubhouse the other day talking about, uh, we were talking about gamification, how you celebrate people and different incentives. So one of the dope thing that happens in the club is because everybody's at different levels, you can celebrate people for their growth. Exactly. So there was one young lady that says, I've been an entrepreneur for three years, but I never sold anything. In this mm. program, I just made my first sale ever. Somebody just oh, bought an eight hundred dollar wow. coaching thing from me, and I'm like overwhelmed with joy. Mm. And we high fiving, and like you need to be celebrated, like the person that just made a million dollars, as opposed to like only feeling like you can't, you can only get celebrated when you hit certain thresholds. Mm. You know right. what I'm saying? So mm. we try to do a good job of sharing the the, the praise and letting everybody um, feel valued. In so it. some practical tips, yeah. for for the entrepreneur who. You know, we're not necessarily focused on the hundred thousand. Yep, yep, yep. Let's focus first on covering your expenses. Okay. Right. For that entrepreneur who says, "I just need to make money in my business. I want to cover my expenses," based on what you see most often from your audience, from your community, what would be three to five tips that you would give them to assess or audit in their plan or structure right now? Yeah. So for people wanting to cover their expenses, the first thing, and this is a non-tangible thing, but it's still step number one: put some respect on it. Like a lot of us, we just throw around business and entrepreneurship, like because you worked up the courage to be an entrepreneur, people are supposed to buy from you. Right. Or because you just decided to print some shirts, I'm supposed to want one. Mm. But like have some humility and appreciation to like the forefathers. But I mean like put some respect on this. You want to, out of your own brain, create stuff and you want people to buy it so you can cover your expenses and you feel entitled to them. Like you tripping. You feel <laughs> like, entitled right. to the sale. Right, so <laughs> step one, calibrate your brain. This is a beautiful, wonderful thing. We still got a yeah. world of folks. Y'all know I get long-winded, so bring me back in. Nah, right, There's work. a world of people that live off less than $2 a day, and you tripping because I won't buy your $58 hoodie? Mm. Like, you got to bring, you got some, you need some context. Right. So first, I would say calibrate your brain for what you're really trying to do. Okay. Um, second thing, and this is still may not feel tangible to people, but test this stuff out. You can't, for, you can't force people to buy stuff. Mm -hmm. So a lot of folks won't even, they just come up with it, put it out there. Yeah. Whether you test on Instagram stories or you go try to sell, go set up shop at, if you got a physical product in a non-COVID environment, like go set up shop at the church and see if you can actually sell something. Mm -hmm. Because putting it on, hey, you were dope for this, like posting it on uh, Instagram, that's like, that's not selling, that's not marketing, that's not a call to action, that's, you're not doing anything, you're just hoping. The link in my bio. Yeah, post and pray, link right? Link in my bio. <laughs> post and, and pray. You, when you get to that link in the bio, there's like 10 things to choose right. from. <laughs> out of this. I call it post and pray. They post and pray, somebody about pray, somebody about host somebody about host somebody about right? So put some respect on it. Two, I would say you gotta get aggressive about the selling piece, like, so do your research and then learn how to sell. 
Um, the other thing, and this is what most people make they they miss. You got to document what you're trying to do. So if are, you're trying to cover five hundred dollars a month, what does that mean in practical of what you've got to sell? Okay. So if I've got a, if I've got a hundred dollar product, okay. I need to sell five of these. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, what's my conversion rate? Ten percent which means that out of every 10 people I talk to, one person gonna say yes. Mm -hmm. So in order to sell five, I gotta talk to 50 people. Okay. So your goal is talk to 50 people this day, this week, this month. Write it out. But if you don't quantify that, you're just out here like, man, I'm talking to folks, they're not doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you didn't even give yourself a fighting chance. For mm -hmm. sure. Cause you sure. only talked to 12 people. Mm -hmm. And that's why 1.2 of them bought, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite teaching points, man, to focus on the work and not the reward. If you focus on facts, because that's the only thing you can truly control. Yep. The fact that you go talk to 50 people. Yep. You can't control someone taking their money out of their pocket and, and buying it. Right. You. But, but if you know the numbers, yep. you can control, yep. I'm going to talk to 50. Now, if you don't talk to 50, you got to have a conversation with yourself. Facts. You can't be mad at them. You yep. got to be mad. Oh, I, didn't even, I didn't at least hit my 50 yep. attempts. Yep. Yeah. And then inside of that 50, Donnie, bring me back again. Inside of that 50, ain't nothing in there but data. Mm -hmm. And mm. buying is only one piece of the data, mm -hmm. right? What point in your pitch did everybody walk away at? Was it price? Was it when you pulled the shirt out? Was it when you told them to click the link? But like, where did you lose them at? Right. So that we can course correct and probably get a better conversion yeah. rate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What feedback did you get from those that did buy? Did you follow up and say, what made you say yes? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it might be like, man, your personality. Well, that's a misleading indicator when you're trying to grow a brand because yeah. most people can't scale personality. Can't scale so personality. if you're selling me this jacket and the jacket ain't what made me buy it, I'm going to struggle to really grow yeah. because I can only be me in so many rooms. My bad, I keep hitting the mic. I saw y'all getting mad at Robert one day because his, his mic was uh, messing up. <laughs> and Shout out. We, we up there. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get shamed and everything. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Robert, man. For sure. Um, but uh, we might have got the numbers out of order, but I would say inside of that part, right, you got to understand the numbers and, and do your part of the process. Um, and what was the question? How do they cover their expenses? Well, what tips would you give yeah. a person? Like what, what areas should I focus on if I just, I want to cover my, my expenses? So for example, you talked about if your closing percentage is, you know, X out of X number of people, mm -hmm. then you need to, you need to go and talk to 50 people. And so I would tell someone if you're if you're taking sales calls or if you're making actual pitches human human, um, the first thing that I would talk about is if you're struggling, if you got this many people who are willing to have the conversation with you, but you're struggling to make a sale, then you, you first are you talking to the right people? Facts. Right. So I would I would say one of my strategies or, or tips would be make sure you're attempting to sell the right product or right. service to the right absolutely person um, because. Many times people are trying to start their social media or start their business leveraging their social media. Yep. Well, most of us have been on Facebook and Instagram, Facebook at least since 2010, Instagram I think maybe since 2012-ish. Mm -hmm. And so you've got this mass number of people, of people who are not interested mm -hmm. in your product yep. or your service, mm -hmm. right? So now how do you start getting the right person so that we have more people to sell to? That part is more important than anything else. It does not matter how dope a product or service is if you're talking to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And I have to give people polarizing examples so that they get it. Right? Polarizing examples. So Davis. <laughs> it's a spectrum. Okay, I know what polarizing <laughs> means. Like like a, a spectrum from here to there. Yep. Like just more options. Yep. So things North you Pole so here, funny. South Pole I, over here. You see, I try to help her. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, okay. But what I'm glad everybody, this is my regular language, so you know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all stopping me. Just, and I'm doing my best. I'm dressing. We're going to get to the rest of this. Don't worry about I, it. I can don't tell worry. when David, you lost him. Right? <laughs> He's over there in his head. He can't move past polarized, and he hears nothing yeah. else that you're saying you, after Nah, that. you know what? I, uh, there's a question I wanted to ask. It just wasn't the right time <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of dating while you was at the crib. Like, no, no. Uh, uh, Mighty. Uh-huh. People are, they so have the, pins out right now. I'll just tell you where my head they, was. So, okay. this, is, right this is, you got to talk to the right people. So here's what I mean, right? This is one of my polarizing examples. Me and Donnie have similar needs. We both drinking water, right? We can't go more than two, three days without it. We need it. It don't matter how much money she have. It don't matter that she's a woman and I'm a man, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't care how dope the packaging is. I don't care about the benefit. I don't need feminine hygiene products. 
Exactly. So you're wasting your time. Now, at best, I could be buying them from someone else, but I'm typically going to have set instructions. Yeah. Your wife sent you to the store. She ain't letting you it's freestyle. It's not up to you to freestyle right. the product. She's, right? But oh, like, I saw this brand. My whole boy go grocery has. shopping. My, so my yeah. marketing brain, I understand that category, right? Mm -hmm. So there are people with light flow, heavy flow. There are people who might need extra protection, whatever, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Just because you package it up and make it sound good, if you're talking to me, you're just wasting your time. Right. So sometimes people don't understand what that means in their business context. Mm -hmm. So if I do marketing consulting and you don't need no marketing, mm -hmm. Why am I talking to you? I right. got to free myself of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. But folks don't know how this thing happens. So can I be nerdy really quickly? Yeah, go for That's it. That's what All I'm right. looking for. Absolutely. So you got to do what we call segmentation. Right. It's fancy word for just separate people into groups. Mm -hmm. And again, as people, we got a lot of stuff in common. As consumers, we buy wildly different. But if you know how to organize us, you know how to put us in groups where we will look similar again. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is demographics. Mm -hmm. Everybody be like 25 to 45. Right, but what does this mean? What it means is there are things that 15 year olds need that 80 year olds don't need exactly. and vice versa. There are things that people who make a million dollars need that people who make $100,000 don't need. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't separate this out, you'll be talking to people but they won't be the right people. Or you'll be using the right people, but you won't be using the right language, right? Mm -hmm. So demographics, I wanna look at your age, I wanna look at your sex, I wanna look at your marital status, your income. Should I open my ad and say, what's up, y'all? Well, culturally, if my audience responds to that, sure. Should I say shout it, but run the ad in New York? No, no. because if they got an aversion, if they don't like people, because y'all got me checking my words. New York mm -hmm. versus ATL. Right? If, you, if you don't like folks from Atlanta, now when you see an ad and you in Brooklyn and I say, what's up, Shouty? You can't relate. I've right. already tuned you out because I don't understand the demographics of my audience. Mm -hmm. So first, you got to get into that and map it out because mm -hmm. who am I talking to? Mm -hmm. Then geographics, where they at? Mm -hmm. People in different places need different things. Would you try to sell a mink coat in the middle of the desert? Well, we know it get chilly at night, but that's a nerdy uh, bar. But chances are not, would you try to sell a mink coat to people who ain't got no money? No, even if they like it, they can't afford it. Right. Well, you dial in on geography, we can take Atlanta. Every city got a poor side and a rich side. Right. If you was in real estate and you want to make a million dollars a year, you got to decide how many houses do I want to sell? At what price point do I want to sell? And what must I modify about myself based on the geographics of this location? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to sell in Buckhead, you can't dress like somebody who's selling in Bankhead. Exactly. It just is what it is. It ain't got to be bad. You ain't got to get upset about it. Mm -hmm. These are just differences because geography is another way you can separate us. Right. So now we got demographics. We got geographics. Psychographics. Anytime you hear psych, we just talking about the mind. Right. What do people think about? What do they value? So, David, you could be in my age demographic. You could be in my geography but you value something differently. Mm. And so even though I thought I had you, when I go to pitch you something, mm. it don't work because I don't understand your value system, gotcha. right? Gotcha. If I do understand your value system, I can come at it a different way. And then lastly is behavioral. If I know what you've done in the past, mm. I've got a better chance of understanding what you'll do today and tomorrow. This is solid. So I wanna be able to collect this information. Right. Does Dave buy from me once a month? Or does he buy from me once a year? The data. Because if Dave buys once a year, I can send Dave an email and say, Dave, what's up, my man? I ain't heard from you since March. Yeah. I just want to let you know that. Mm -hmm. And he like, dang, yeah. he been paying attention to me. Right. Yeah. Now, if my business is small, I can know the people. But if my business is large, I just know the groups. Right. So I got groups of heavy buyers, groups of light buyers, mm -hmm. groups of lapsed buyers, mm -hmm. and I talk to them differently. Mm -hmm. Bringing it full circle with the dating piece, right? You don't talk and give everybody the same script that you're getting to know. Mm. Based yeah. on their value system, you want to cater the dating experience to them and also make sure you don't pull yourself too far from your core. So I heard on one of the other videos, you don't like Chipotle, right? Why we got to bring it back Because there? if I didn't know that about you and I'm like, let's go to Chipotle, I'm not that's excited. not something that you value. Mm -hmm. So Where you somebody, really got to talk to her and say, yo, we're going to church's chicken. And you know, she like, it really, oh my gosh, is it open today? Yeah. And you would think that somebody that don't like Chipotle also might not like churches, <laughs> but, but you get into them behaviors. Exactly. And you realize she likes to buy what from churches? Okra and, and okra. biscuits. Okay. So I can make her day. I do not or, eat the chicken, but I do enjoy very much the okra nothing from and the biscuits. <laughs> and you got to, you the got secret to, to church's chicken is the, that you got to pull audacity. up to the drive through You got to pull up to the drive through and you cannot look through the window. When you go in, <laughs> I'm not eating no place where I can't look through the window. You cannot look through the window. Like, through the window you and you know, I'm a major germaphobe, so this is a complete oxymoron to who I am. 
But this is the person that brings her own utensils. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Is this, is this, own is this straw, the thing? Bro. She... A hundred percent. But when I pull up to this the window, I'm like, hey, thank you so much. <laughs> I will pretend to be on a whole phone call while I'm, hey, yeah, hold on one second. Hey, here you go real quick. Oh, you need to stop. Oh. And, then just, and I'm feeling for the bag She's to get so my food. You serious. cannot look through the window <laughs> whatsoever. And the only reason that I kind of trust the okra is because it, it has to go through that hot grease. Okay. What right? percent single are you on David's scale? I cannot be I can't. convinced to answer that question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's well, for two reasons. It's One, I want to make sure that people shoot their shot the right way if you open the shots being shot. You know oh, what I'm saying? they're going to shoot regardless. <laughs> and oh, then two, regardless. two, when you spent your leg kind of hit my leg, so I'm thinking, like, I might want to get some okra ready for you. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. No, but you want to know the percentages, though. I'll I just want to know the percentage. I don't want to disrespect nobody. So what, what I have decided no, on this platform is that my my uh, my my personal life, my dating life is off limits. Yeah, I'll and, share mine. And I, I feel like you should share yours. I'm still yours. gonna talk about it with her. my my personal it. life is off limits because Let's Shans starts getting too personal. And you and you know though outside, <laughs> no, I don't. like I don't even get too personal. even in knowing my situations, Shans knows that I'm extremely private. Yeah, shit. I am extremely private when it's so just like, part of me that I protect. This thing, don't get bit. twisted. I don't say anything about her personal life. I just like the pressure of her uncomfortable. How when she's like this, and did it, you start talking about a relationship, she said, well, I just, and she gets her whole thing together. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at her. She was chilling a second ago. <laughs> and she she over doing that arrow. She was back now. So I was like, I, I like that. You're going to so. get a text after this one. Like, so you ain't single? You're 42% single? That's what we're doing? That's so what we're doing? For the record, my body's all my for the record, like to that. answer the question, I believe... Um, that you are single until married, right? Yeah, that's not really Lana. You, yeah, it, it is. But I believe that you are single until married by status. But I believe that there are steps that you take to become less and less sing single in David's. Okay, in David's, you're, you're working right? less and less single because no, there's well, a percentage Well, not even less system. and less single. Nope, you said No, 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 no. no. Okay, no, you're on my team. Strike it from the record. Less and less available. Okay. Right? So, uh, mm -hmm. am I available is the question. Still scales the percentage. What's up? What's up? Listen, let, let me formulate it in my head first, okay? But, okay, this yeah. is a good... So, then, so make it... Let's tie the nerdy stuff back together. Part of what affects the way you can turn somebody from an audience member to a buyer is when you understand these things because you got to know how to talk to them differently. Mm -hmm. sure. And so when you just hit them with the same cookie cutter message, mm -hmm. that's usually what's going to lower your percentage of people that you can convert. You mm. got to tailor to the person that you're talking to, especially for those of us in the service space. So I need to understand we use different languages, but mm -hmm. it's different words. Same thing. What's the pain point? Mm -hmm. What are you trying to get accomplished? Mm -hmm. How soon do you need it? Mm -hmm. What's it worth to you if you were to, mm -hmm. if I can make this thing mm -hmm. go away for you, mm -hmm. right? Would you pay $10,000 to get this in four weeks? Yes, no, maybe so. What about, and then I can, now. so now we're talking about content. I can tell the same story in multiple different ways, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So let's say I want to sell a program at $10,000. I can figure out why you need it, and that's one of the stories. I can figure out how much more money you can make after you buy it. That's another story. I can compare this to whatever I think you're comparing it to, mm -hmm. and that's another story. Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is just tapping the right psychology and building a bridge so that you can see it and understand it the right way. Because gotcha. yeah. if I just slap it down and say, hey, Dave, I can remarket your brand, bro, for 10 grand, what's up, right? Mm. No, nah, that ain't cool. Hey, how much is how much is your clothing brand doing, right? He's always doing 100,000. All right, cool. What about for an investment of 10 grand, I can scale this to 180,000 within six months? Doable, yes, no, right? Mm -hmm. Now, as I Framing understand where you at, you're like, yeah. well, would I pay 10 to make 60? And I, so technically profit 50 more? I might, right? Yeah. Now we having a conversation, but you gotta know the person. Mm. Yeah. If I just come at you with that pitch, but I don't know you have a clothing brand, or I yeah. don't know that you're, like I know you're super busy. You're a dad, you're a husband, you run multiple businesses, you got a podcast. So if I was ever gonna talk to you, one of the most critical things I'm gonna talk about is either how I'm gonna give you some time back or speed up a result for you. Because mm. you don't have time to play with a business for another That's year. Good. That is right? Good. Did you just pitch me? I did. Oh, no. <laughs> and I didn't even oh, sell God. you nothing, but that we at least hard. you interested to have a conversation. That's now hard. it's like, well, you're over there thinking like, is it possible to <laughs> invest <laughs> in to get back time? another 60? Oh, wow. Do I Amazing. need to schedule a call with Nadi? Yeah. But there's somebody else where time might not be affected, yeah. right? So then I don't want to lead with that. That's good. Yeah. 
what's what's happening right now in the world of entrepreneurship is really, really, really important. And I'll lead into this with saying one of my favorite affirmations, I have an affirmation for nearly everything. Dope. One of my favorite affirmations is, I am able to be fully who I am, 100% myself, and still attract my ideal mm. clients and customers mm. and make money in my business every single day, mm. right? Because it's really hard to grow and develop something where you have to suppress a little bit of who you are, yeah. right, in order to make it work. And so the beauty about what I love is that you have entrepreneurs, like, you're fly in an urban setting, right? But now, how do you communicate with these seven, eight, nine, ten figure brands who see you? This is how I dress up. Either you're interested in the information and what I can do, you're interested in the result and me, me solving this or healing this pain that you're experiencing, or you not. And so this, this out, this explosion of entrepreneurs who are just being themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm and making serious money doing it, I think is a beautiful thing. Yeah. A beautiful yeah. thing. What we're witnessing for analogy's sake, we're witnessing when Allen Iverson was walking in the press conferences dressed in urban wear. With and folks are braids. like, you ain't gonna wear no suit. And then over time, we see it where that's the norm, right? Yeah. So entrepreneurs, it started with a few people. Shout out to the ETs of the world that was wearing hats and wearing Jordans, walking up in these people corporations. Because yeah. now we can come in there a little bit more like that, sure. right? Mm -hmm. sure. And now at scale, a whole bunch of us is saying, we're going to take up space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're willing to say no if the terms don't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to have some, like, you got to be the went through something. Because it's hard to say no when the money, when the money low. Right, right. Like, <laughs> how much you got? I can do that. But yeah. when right. everything good and you start to stand your ground, mm -hmm. then I think the other beautiful thing that's happened is this. Like, you start to collaborate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and cross-pollinate mm -hmm. and they like wait y'all know each other y'all yeah. work together um so i'm excited for where we at and kind of where we going so for sure. am i I, th I think um we we unpacked a whole lot you know what i'm saying we realized that you're open to uh dms <laughs> um uh, donnie is still you know trying to keep a private life but I, i'm i'm gonna do as much as i can to just dig as much out of her as possible just for y'all <laughs> because I feel like I just y'all deserve it, okay? The but, funny part is David Shans knows exactly what happens in my private <laughs> and I, and life. And I never say I, I never say it though. It's it's strictly strictly for he uncomfortableness just, that I make. He just you, okay? likes to That's make it. me uncomfortable, and what, you know I'm it, I'm right? super shy. So mm -hmm. talking about certain things is just you know on certain platforms when we're here to really get the keys. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to serve the people what they came for. <laughs> well, what I I, I want to say uh, thank you. My D for uh, coming out and sharing your your experience because it's been amazing to go from 3,500 followers to where you at today. I'm probably gonna hit 68 by the end of the day. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, so 68,000 in what what amount of time? Uh, 18 months maybe. In 18 months. Yeah. That's crazy. That is crazy. And just kind and, and you are you have been like really showing the journey every step of the way. And mm -hmm. I really appreciate the transparency. I'll just ask you later about like when you was at your mom how you was doing the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk I, about it. <laughs> I want to also thank you Madi for um you know I find it interesting. I think you met Shans in like 2016. Yeah. And I know that he's been um doing these interviews and having podcasts, you know, for like years. And I, I was thanking you earlier off camera for uh, showing up when I finally invited you, oh my, you know what I mean, it, to take the center it. seat for the first time. Um, I, I definitely thank you for showing up, you know, for me. And because <laughs> yeah. you've, you've not been on the podcast. No, before, right? no, yeah. Right. yeah. But he's been on every other stage that I've had, so. Yeah. Which leads someone to don't wonder, try, don't you try, know Don't try to divide us, okay, I mean, okay, you have Daddy? been on every single don't stage. Don't try to divide us. This, this, you have been on every stage, but the podcast right now, I think we're at, yeah. just on YouTube, like over three million yeah. views. So I, I'm, I'm really excited to see what this does <laughs> and, and how this shifts your brand. Yeah, You know I what I mean? And And puts you in front of your right demographic in your audience of go. people who actually need this. <laughs> I, I think this was really important. Appreciate it. Um, so and, and I just, I look forward to uh, how, how this can uh, help and, and lift and catapult your brand for yeah. sure. Okay. And yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm excited for y'all. I'm sorry, I don't want to take the I'm last word, but like it. sometimes mm -hmm. it's um, like just by living your regular life, it starts to feel normal, right? Mm -hmm. That you are who you are, you who you are, and you guys have decided to come together and do this. Mm -hmm. But when we look at it on that cultural level, this is massive. Wow. Especially because the space that we're in, the average person in Topeka, Kansas, they can't tell who's good, who's bad, who's right, who's wrong. 
So social proof in and of itself, what you're doing is you're building a whole lot of trust, right? Mm -hmm. You're bringing people up here that are credible, putting them out in front of the world, and it's going to change some other people's lives. So I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, get some get some deep words together, okay? Because you're going <laughs> to close us out, okay? Strong. Again, I want to say thank you. We're going to do. Uh, we're going to pay some bills real quick, okay? This podcast is sponsored as always by the Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com, the only community that gathers every single day, Monday through Friday, for the empowerment of our people. When I say our people, anybody who has a goal, anybody who has a dream, anybody who wants more out of life, we have a community for you. We gather every day, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday, um, and we cover different topics. Uh, you know, one month we're doing content creation. Um, this next month we're doing um, uh, becoming financially literate. Becoming financially lit. That's the that's the joy. And every month we have a different thing. We bring on uh, different experts. You gonna come on the call? Finally. Yeah, for sure. All right. Yeah, I'm actually I'm gonna text Jet. You're a hater. Stop <laughs> trying to divide us. Okay. It's, I just want to make sure that that part is. Yes, I, I'm on actually right. You said it yeah. right. Yeah. What time? What time? Are you, right now? you said morning. Eight a.m. All right. I'm gonna make that shake. I'll be up yep, at five. I'm going to tell Jen right now. My D is on for Monday. What do you want to talk about? But you gotta like really okay. Mm -hmm. How to the growth, the growth and consistency, something like that. Okay, it's fine. Just put some respect on everything. I want to fly, bro. Oh yeah, of course. Let me fly. Mm -hmm. Don't have floor. me out here looking crazy. Just put your name out there. Who Dunny is my, this guy? Dunny my manager now. <laughs> Absolutely. What's the percentage? Twenty percent off the rip. Right, everybody. Cool. Uh, I don't know if you want the management problems. <laughs> I mean, I'm hearing y'all try broker, broker deals and everything. Y'all taking the Live long. Y'all taking the long way there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Um, well, okay, great. So do you have a commercial? And as usual, this podcast, the Sleep is for Suckers podcast is also. The what? What is wrong? I don't understand. <laughs> I, I, I do just that. don't get I it. I do that on purpose. The Social Proof <laughs> podcast, you guys. <laughs> yeah, because the way you looked at me, like you got it right. <laughs> See, it's the Sleep is No, it's not. I do that every time. You guys know it's an insider <laughs> at this point. The Social Proof Podcast. I am David's co-host slash personal assistant slash. What do you personally assist me with? Who invited you to speak today, Madi? Uh, I feel like I'm in the middle of something that I don't want to be in the middle of. <laughs> I'm grateful for the opportunity. I would love to come back if your audience oh deems it necessary. No, 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 no. In all seriousness, because... Uh, in, in all seriousness, I am Donnie Wiggins, David's co-host of the Social Proof Podcast. And so this episode is also this episode is also sponsored by SixFigureEDU.com, the dopest community where coaches, consultants, course creators, group membership owners, any digital service provider can come and put their business together from the beginning to the end. It's an amazing implementation program that uh, helps to set you up uh, to get on track to build a business to six figures. And right now, I am also helping you out with your content. I have found that so many people are struggling with what to post on the internet every single day. And so you can get it from me. You just text me the words post to paid at 404-737-2767. And I got you. There it is, man. Again, Madi, thank you so much, man. It's just been a pleasure to uh, see not only your own growth, but all the other people you're helping in terms of figuring out this whole hectic, crazy, confusing content creation, mm -hmm. social media world that uh, so many people are having a problem navigating through and you make it so simple. So um, please <laughs> let everybody know how um, they can find you, both business and personal. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> yeah, you put your still... phone number out in these internet streets? <laughs> Because he's yep. really only like 80%. He's 80%. That's hot. 80% single. He might have a little situation, a little text message situation going on. 85, 87% single. So shoot your shot. Yeah, real quick, have you found anybody inside of the Clubhouse app that you're like, hmm, I wonder if she's single? You hit that profile. I haven't. Um, I'm just now like taking Clubhouse serious. Like, okay. So I'm prioritizing. I was on a couple of nights ago and early this morning. But I haven't, I haven't went at it from that angle. I've just been trying to find doper people. So I connected with somebody in real estate. You mean to tell me you haven't clicked on a profile, led you over to their Instagram, you checked it out. You I haven't been down that rabbit hole. Mm. Yeah. So you probably will. Are I'm you, not against it. We're talking about Have you done it on Instagram? Are you like... Boy, duh. Are you in the... Like, <laughs> no. Do you look at your comments sometimes and like, ooh, who is that? 
yeah, I look at follows, comments, likes, whatever. That's you, why the right avatar, the right picture can go a long way. You know do you saying? ever shoot your shot? Daily. Daily? Do you really shoot a shot? How, yeah, you know what? That's what I want to ask you. How do you shoot your shot? Do you, like, really get into the psychographics? Just for the, the record, for those of you who were here for the keys about business, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little foolishness about to happen like, now. Yeah, do you gather the data? Do you scroll through? Okay, I see what's going on. I see the stuff that they replied to. And then do you shoot the shot? I mean, no, nah, you don't like. I'm not. Like I'm not though. coming. I'm not trying to win the NBA Finals. You know what I'm saying? You just. <laughs> I mean, you shooting shots every day. You just throw. I mean, daily because we. You gotta. You know, it's on the internet. I needed me a little sound bite. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> at least weekly for sure. You gotta shoot a shot. It's only 52 weeks. You know so what, what does your shot look okay. like typically? Um, some type of like. See, y'all can't give away the nah, sauce. Come let's on. tell us. Let's shoot a shot. It's real quick. all about the right, like, let's go look at recent follows. Let's let's look and see if there's someone who's We won't shot. be doing that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> what? I know I'm you know, don't let the little down to earth little interview part <laughs> fool you. you know, we can't do it on discretion. Camera? You know, no, I'm trying to no, outrage no, you right now. We don't have <laughs> you to get share your, the name. Get, get your you phone know out. <laughs> I'll get my phone out. What are we doing? We shoot a shot. No, we, let's get the text messages. Let's put my phone away. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like this, the 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 art of shooting a shot is you just got to get the first. It's just like if you're talking to somebody in real life. Some people come too crazy in that first message. You just okay. want to get a conversation started. So you know it's all saying? about the first message. Well, it's about, yeah. So it helps if you already, if they already on your page mm -hmm. and you know women, cause y'all, I won't say all, but a lot of women, they're not comfortable shooting their shot. Okay. So they just let you know that the basket is open. They like a couple pictures. They come in, they go down <laughs> nine, the 12. Basket is open. <laughs> that, that's the sound bite. The scoreboard is on. Uh, you can <laughs> score here. No, but, <laughs> but like they go down 16 <laughs> pictures and they leave a little heart or something like that. They just let you know if you were to see this. It's okay. It's okay. Is that this, how you digitally flirt? Yeah, they like, they like a bunch of stuff bounce around. They either really, now you can get this shit wrong. They either just really like your content and they have like eight things in a row or they're letting you know, bro, like, yeah, because right. I, I do that. I will go and find a new page or a new follower who I'm yeah. like, oh, I, I dig his or her profile. And I will go and like a bunch of, yeah. you know, just mostly to let you know that I see you. Yeah. Right. I see you. I like your stuff. Never fails. Somebody gonna shoot a shot. They come yeah. in the DMs. I noticed that you like 25 of my photos. No, I don't say it like that. Like, like, <laughs> no, 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 you you it. Never it, it, it never fails. So as women, it's sometimes basket. we're scared to go through yeah. on a new pro because I only usually do it on a new profile. Like yeah. you're new to this community. Let me know. Let me let you know that I see you. Let mm. me go like a like like four pictures. Mm. But uh, but I, so I, my favorite is when a woman is uh, like I might post something that's a little bit risky, right? A little bit of bait in there. So the, I posted something the other day that said, I'm only going to shoot my shot once. Mm -hmm. And then in the fine print, I was like, quit playing, pass the ball back, right? So that's I you fishing. That. So I that's that. me fishing. I and then Let's see who's responding. somebody DM'd me a basketball. So now I know we can shoot. You that know what I'm saying? And now we've been the, texting. That was, so, oh, oh, that was so smooth on her part, that was right? smooth on her part, so for now sure. Been we've been texting, yeah, just off of that. So are you interested in yeah, the person you? who sent you the basketball? Uh, it's too early to tell, but she got a lot of good things going for her. Not and and so it went from Instagram to actually texting on the phone number. Yeah. So when she said, did, did y'all get to like, are you dating or anything like that? Uh, you know, you just got to assume some things until you get some clarity. I mean, because I you're not like texting you're memes back and forth. Single, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you need I, to relax. If you, if you took it off. Somebody, now let's be very clear. I know at least one person that's going to have, we're going to have to have a conversation about this here interview. So, uh, I oh, said, I'll send y'all the dinner, single, I'll send y'all the dinner bill. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm a man. So it's like, at the end of the day, I'm single. No, yes, you're single. I don't mind having a conversation. I don't like that I'm a man business. I'm what a I'm, woman. Now what? Cool. You should, Yo, you should say like that. When I say is, I'm a man, I mean, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to like change my world for somebody that I'm not all the way with. Yeah, right. So levels. It, I'm cool with it. If, you won't smoke, bring it. There's levels. You can't, yo, <laughs> like you can't even say, so for instance, you might be in a situation where you're dating somebody and y'all not together, uh -huh. but if somebody asks you on stage, yo, are you single? And you be like, yo, I'm, I'm single. Yeah. You know you can't do that because the person's in this. You can't. Well, you can't I would, do it no, with I'm that not much. at that level where I would bring somebody to something, right? So everybody that I'm texting, if we're not clear, let's get clear. Everybody. Everybody clear, that I'm texting or whatever. That's what he just did. Yeah. If we're not clear, 
Exactly. If you see this, it's all love, but I'm don't you on record. Yeah, cuz I'm not going to stop your progress. Don't stop nothing you're doing cuz you thinking we about to have something. If we mm-hmm. if we don't have anything, we don't have anything, right? We can still be getting closer to being less available. Right. But I want you to keep I ain't got nobody under contract. You know what I'm saying? Keep mm-hmm. moving, right? All, all I'm asking mm-hmm. you is just, I want you to consider this percentage system. I, I like the just percentage consider, system. Think, just think about it. I would like I would like your brain to work. Is this going to be a book? <laughs> I think a different we got to use a different terminology. I don't think it should be a percentage of single ship if that's the word. If not, it is now. I think it's a percentage of availability. I think that's a better word, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I You're feel saying. like this. We need to have like make sure that there's clear that this is a different conversation. Like put up a new screen. Yeah. On the let's video. okay. Let's this this would be a whole nother. We, this is dope, you back. This yeah. Is dope. This is, we definitely need like a podcast roundtable on entrepreneurship, single. Well, we're supposed stuff. to be able to good. talk about like dating as an entrepreneur. That's a big deal because so many people yeah, sacrifice their time, and and because they see things like you know, even the Sleep is for Suckers brand, or they see people who talk about, right now I'm 100% focused, Mm -hmm. that aspiring entrepreneur out there, or that person who is an entrepreneur building, who's also dating, get the misconception that they're doing it wrong because they're building a business and dating. Yeah. Well, does that mean that I'm not as serious? No, absolutely not. All right, we'll we'll get into it. But anywho, my day, let people know how they can find you. (laughs) Oh, that's right. right. And close us out (laughs) strong. With some words, something right, clever, cool. something meaningful. <laughs> no and, pressure. Um, yeah, no pressure. No so pressure. You want to see if I really can write these quotes off the I dome. I need to see the bar. <laughs> the, the top. Let's I'm go. looking for the bar. Let's Let me get before. out my notepad, um, please. So I'm, you can find me, Ma D. Woodard, M-A-H-D-I-W-O-O-D-A-R-D. Can I do like this? You guys yeah, put it thing. down here in the video? Do well, it's already yeah. No, I'm yeah. teasing. Sure. I'm teasing. Yeah. But no, Instagram is my uh, most popular platform. That's where I spend the most time. But anywhere, I'm starting to get active on Twitter. YouTube will be coming soon, but just Madi Woodard. Love to connect with you guys. And my phone number is there, but it's the other phone. You know what I'm saying? I got two phones. Yeah, so that phone. It's the other phone. It's definitely. And then here's what I will leave you guys with. So there's a quote, um, and I think it's sort of indicative of just the arc of this story that we've been talking about. The quote is, never be too attached to anything mm-hmm. that you can't let it go to progress. And so a lot of what... Say it one more time. Never be too attached to anything that you can't let it go to progress. Okay. And it. so a lot of what we, different people mm-hmm. will explain, explain it differently, but people talk about unlearning and relearning. A lot of times we just walk around with stuff that we believe to be true that may or may not be true. Mm-hmm. And we might need to let these things go in mm-hmm. order to get to where we need to get to. Oh, so wow. Donnie's talking about you can go through her system to build your business up. The morning meetup, right? You might say, I'm not a morning person. Why are you attached to this? Mm-hmm. The progress might mean you got to get your butt up and get in this morning meetup. Mm-hmm. So don't be attached to these fake things, right? Mm-hmm. And then still also want to grow in progress. That's so good. sometimes you got to shed it, let it go. Whether it be the way you think, the way you're approaching business, your ego, whatever. Um, if progress is what you want, then that's what you keep focused. That's what you keep center. I love it. I love it. Can't close it out no better than that. Tell the people bye, Donnie. All right, you guys. Bye. <laughs> All right. I'll let y'all go get some social proof. Peace. Appreciate it, y'all.